Welcome back to another episode of War Divisions. Um, today we're gonna can, we're gonna do the uh, stat showcase for my teams. Uh, unfortunately, I was gonna do that yesterday, but uh, midway through, I think I got caught up in uh, actually fighting, and I didn't get to talk as much about uh, team building and how to run the teams. Um, so hopefully, this episode will all strictly be about that. Uh, so I'm not going to fight anyone here. If you're interested in looking at how they perform, you're welcome to see uh, one of the other video, uh, the video posted yesterday uh, called the Three Arena, uh, Three World of Arena Showcase, uh, Stats Showcase. Anyways, uh, okay, starting off here, um, this is my Rosa Gunner team. Uh, this is the team that I ran um, the Can't Pick Your Opponent Challenge back during the Dwayne week. Uh, I would not be able to run that right now because there's a 100% Thancrit running around. Uh, and that will basically uh, hard counter this team because this team has no uh, other types of damage other than uh, other than gunner damage. I guess technically you can enable Holy for uh, for Rosa uh, if you run into a 100 defense Thancrit. But that, kinda, that seems more like a uh, band-aid than a fix. So starting off with Farika, um, the most important things uh, about Arena is your first couple of turns setup. And really, the most important two people are the left and right two people. Uh, the middle person is kind of uh, hit or miss. You can pretty much put anyone in the middle, as long as, long as there's no jump considerations. Uh, so this team is a little easy to consider. Uh, it's a little harder to consider uh, Nivlu. But basically, uh, what you want to do is check out who's going first. That's the most crucial thing to look at when you're doing these uh, AI manipulations. So who's going first? Here, Federica has the highest speed. She ha she's at 88. Uh, Luarta should go last at 71. And Rosa is decently speedy at 78. So what will happen here is um, Federica first turn, because she's the fastest, will run right over to uh, Rosa. And you notice that we don't actually have a ton of attack here. Uh, Federica's uh, here for uh, she's here for the gunner stats, the status effects that gunner provides, as well as the AOE that uh, barrage provides. Uh, this manipulation, what it does is it makes Federica go first, and since she's in the first spot, what she would do her first, and since she's in the first spot and she has no jump, she is not able to reach the opponent. So. A DPS AI uh, will always attack the opponent first and then consider buffing your team and then buffing yourself. That is the three, uh, those are the three priorities built into the AI. So even though Federica has nine range, because she doesn't have jump plus one, she is not able to run over and just shoot the opponent. So that means uh, it will trigger priority number two, which is buffing, buffing your team. So Federica will run right in between the two of them and buff both of them. Uh, if they're, if uh, you can't buff both of them, they will buff the person to the leftmost uh, of them. So Federica will run over and buff the two of them. Then it's Rosa's turn, and Rosa's first turn is going to be zombie TMR because she doesn't have any other ability. Uh, she doesn't have any other supporting ability. I turned off prayer prayer, uh, clear prayer, because once Federica runs into the two of them, uh, at that point. Um, uh, Rosa's pure prayer would not be able to buff all three. So she'll end up wasting two turns using pure prayer and that wouldn't be acceptable. As well as uh, that would that would slow her down way too much. And Rosa's not in need of AP, so there's no need for that. Uh, Rosa, the white mage of uh, Barons, this is also kind of a mage type. Uh, I would say this is kind of a mage type uh, class. So mate, uh, there's a difference between mage type classes and DPS type classes. DPS type classes, for example, like Federica, once she uses bells, she will still move. Uh, mage support type classes, when they use a TMR or when they use a self buff ability, they may or may not move. They generally won't move afterwards. Uh, so there's the big difference. Uh, and then, uh, Luarta will just move, but, uh, but because Luarta, I have her aim fire and firing stance and counsel, I had all that turned off for the same reason I have uh, Rosa's pure prayer turned off. Because after Federica's first turn, all three of them are going to be lined up. 
and there's no way for Luarta to use her. Uh, there's no way for Luarta to use her um, her firing stance or anything like that. So I gave her the Cecil TMR, and she's a tap type. So when she buffs, she will move and then buff, or buff and then move. Uh, it's not like Rosa who just buffs and stands there. So now, uh, now after this first turn, uh, Luarta is going to be standing right on the left. Uh, Federica is going to be in the middle, and then to the right, uh, right next to her is Rosa. Uh, and that's crucial against any kind of Lancer team because uh, Dragoons, especially Kane, a lot of people run Kane in the third position. Um, so what will happen is Kane will run right up, and then by then Rosa will have seven range. And Rosa will shoot him in the face, especially if uh, that cane has the cane helm. Nowadays, most canes are running uh, bells, but when cane first came out, uh, a lot of people were running the helm. And cane is one of those DPS classes that will use the helmet and run, so he'll be real, he'll he'll be right in range of Rosa. So this team uh, will pick on any kind of cane that is holding his own TMR because that's an instant death right there. Because canes that are holding their TMR will use their TMR before they use Courage, and then they'll run up. They'll run right into range of Rosa. Rosa will hit him for 4k, and then Federica will finish him off with a sharpshoot. Uh, just some, just some, uh, <laughs> cheesy wins that you can eke out here and there. Uh, so, other than that, like, uh, the most important stat to look at is agility. Who goes, who goes when? And then you can order them up based on that, um, to give the buffs. Uh, in terms of attack, the only one that breaks the thousand attack is uh, Luarta. Um, basically, the only two things that really matter for these guys is the weapon and the TMR. That middle armor slot can pretty much be anything. I go with Wolfhelm on Federica. Uh, I should go on. I should go Wolfhelm on uh, Luarta because Federica has sharpshoot. Uh, and I would give uh, I would give Luarta either. Um, either uh, Bale Gauntlet or Wolfhelm for accuracy. Here, uh, Federica is holding Platinum Armor because I kind of need her to kind of face tank some of the Gunner teams if I end up playing Gunner versus Gunner. But everything else is pretty standard. Uh, Odin's running 25, uh, Odin's running 25 Man Eater. Uh, Golem is running that custom build I was showing before with the 10 Defense, 10 Man Eater, 18 Pierce Resist. Uh, hopefully the 18 Pierce Resist will help Rosa survive a hit from Kane. Uh, especially because she's in the third position. She's the one that's most likely to face off against Kane because Kane is all generally in the third position. Um, I think that's it about this team. Uh, basically what happens is first turn, Federica goes over, buffs the two of them. Uh, Rosa uses zombie buff. Luarta runs left and use, the, use her TMR buff. There's a reason why I keep... Uh, Rika on the left, it's so that she'll run back first turn, so that so now that she's in the back, she can't hit anybody. So her second turn, she will always use spells. Uh, and third turn, it'll be barrage. Because by then, she'll have aim, fire, and bells, so her barrage will be reaching 10 range. Um, also, it's to get her out of Luarta's way. Um, Luarta, based on this map, because of the choke point, you want Luarta to line up first on the left so that she can run up and sidewinder everybody. Uh, but that's it. That's about the build. Um, generally, this build will win within the first three turns, uh, as in the first three cycles. Uh, generally, by the second cycle, the Warta would have did uh, sidewinder and killed any kind of Dwayne, Super Stern, uh, any of those teams. Cecil, uh, anyone that doesn't have missile resist. All right, uh, this is probably my strongest team. I've got, I can easily get a 10 winning streak if I decide to pick my opponent. Um, when, before, uh, the Thancrit meta came out, um, I was able to run this with, um, a 30, I was able to run a do not pick my, can't pick my opponent team, and I just fight the first guy. Uh, I can get about 13 wins with this team. Um, I had a streak with like 33 wins with this team where I'd never pick my opponent. But of course, that's because everyone was running Dwayne Kane Super Stern. <clears throat> There's still a good amount of that, but you got to watch out for dank crits that are running 100% Missile Resist. And Missile Resist is a bit more prevalent now. So, <clears throat> uh, yeah. <clears throat> because the Missile Resist is 
because of the missile resist going around to counter Nivlu, uh, this team did get weakened a bit. Mostly because no one pulled for Luarta because of Dwayne. Uh, next team, I'll go to the 100 defense mod team. Uh, this team, I am still lacking in certain areas, but I think it's runnable. Um, so basically, I have Mont at low faith because he's really weak to magic. And this is not as bad. It should be 25, but I have the Dwayne, I have the Dwayne VC, so it's not 25. Um, I'm running Chuckable for defense. Uh, the cool thing about this build is you can run three, uh, you cannot even, you can, don't even run a weapon if you want to. Um, but basically I need 75 defense. Uh, that plus Dankrit's, uh, 25 defense boost is going to be a, uh, is going to be 100 defense. And then the positioning of the characters, I position Dwayne here because he should be the fastest character. So first turn, I want him to run right up and use, uh, Atonement on both, on the two of them. Uh, doesn't, it's not that big to the rest of them, but, uh, it helps Dankrit a little bit. Uh, notice that, see, Dwayne's fastest, and then second fastest is, uh, Thankward. Uh, there's a reason I picked Thankward to be second fastest. Well, not that Mont can never be faster, but Thankward is second fastest because I don't want him to move. He will use, he will use his, uh, armor buff and then move. So I want him to be second fastest so Dwayne can come right in between the two of them, use a tome and, and give them 40 slash resist. I mean, 40 slash attack. And then from there, uh, Here's a little thing that you, here's a little tip that you should know. Um, if you're, if your cares, if your cares, uh, if your characters are casting buffs that are single target, uh, and there's no threat involved, so no, nobody has hate, uh, Banquet will use, um, will use Heart of Stone on Mont. He'll, he'll use his buff on the first character, which is Mont. Uh, if they can self buff, if, if the buff is castable on yourself, um, I believe that is still the case. Because Heart of Stone is castable on yourself. So that's why Thancred is second. And Thancred can't go after Mont because Mont has four move and two jump. So Mont will be right up there and Thancred will not be able to reach him with the, uh, with the Heart of Stone. Even though he normally should be, but apparently for whatever reason, he, he doesn't run out there and Heart of Stone Mont if Mont already left. So that's why this is, uh, that's why this is the setup. Um, as you play the game more, you'll understand, like, uh, you'll understand, like, okay, this is how the agility works, uh, here's who I want to buff, things like that, and that's how and you start tweaking it. And as you start tweaking it, you'll start understanding how to play it, uh, how to play your builds better. Um, the Mont is running that same, this is that Golem build I was running, the 10 defense, 10 man eater, 18 pierce. Uh, 18 pierce is good against stuff like Kane, mostly because Kane has, um, I believe Kane has some armor pen. Uh, so you do need some, uh, you do need some pierce resist to go along with that. Uh, this team is good for, uh, fighting other kind of other bruisers. Uh, mostly Agrius, to be honest. Uh, any kind of, any kind of, uh, but it's, it just so happens that it has the fringe benefit of fighting, um, of fighting Federica and Nivlu. Um, I equipped the Leviathan card on him, uh, but really I should equip, uh, this card, Bleeding Blossom, for the additional AP gain. That way, Mont first turn will be, uh, I have everything else turned off for Mont, so his first turn is gonna be Immortal Spirit, and I want his second turn to be Taunting Spell. Uh, unfortunately, the, the problem with this build is there's a lot of defense penetration out there. So, 100 defense is not that uh, is not that unbeatable. Uh, not anymore, anyways. Because stuff like Super Stern have defense pen, they have the ability to lower defense. Uh, Nivlu has Spider Rain to lower defense. Um, who else? Uh, uh, I'm seeing some Laswells. Uh, oh, hey, mm, Rover's here. Hey, Rover, what? Uh, oh, you can't get in the front here. Okay. Uh, Laswell, who else? Um, I believe Kane does have some armor pen as well, but basically because of the armor pen that's running around, 100 defense uh, is not the end all be all. You still need to pay attention to who you fight. Uh, definitely cannot fight 
Lu uh, Lucia, because Lucia's aim fire gives her armor pen. She already has Earth Killer, so she will one shot you. Well, she won't one shot you past the the courage, but you'll you'll basically lose all your health in one shot. Uh, then crit I'm mostly really just using for the bonus, but it turns out his damage is actually not bad. Uh, the thing with Dankrit is, when I was at 79, I didn't really have this problem. Now that I'm at 89, I do have to consider what TMR to give him. Uh, and it's awkward, because I can't give him a TMR that, uh, because TMR buffs still use over the, uh, Heart of Stone. So I can't give him a TMR, otherwise, uh, th otherwise, uh, Mont won't be running out with 100 armor. So I can't give him a buffing TMR. Uh... So that kind of limits my options, and then I can't really give him a piece of uh, armor, and because he's because he wears cloth, he's not a, he doesn't have a lot of the heavy armor TMRs available to him either. So all of these TMRs give a buff, and I can't really have him use any of the buffs. So really, my two options are give him the one with the best stats and turn it off, or give him uh or just give him one that doesn't have a TM uh, that doesn't have a TMR ability, which is kind of unfortunate. Uh, I give him Leviathan as a, uh, as a diagonal coverage, but you really can give him the, uh, fleeting card. Um, this bill cannot run Dankrit as Dragoon, uh, so that kind of just adds to his, uh, diagonal lack of, lack of diagonal coverage. Uh, of course, Spellblades have that issue as well, but Spellblades have Taunting Spell. So, I have to ha I have to keep him as Gunbreaker for the buff, so I can't put him as Dragoon. Dragoon does solve some of the, uh, does solve some of the jump, uh, some of the diagonal issues, but uh, this map is a little bumpy, so horizontal jump won't be as useful. Normal jump will be okay. Uh, here's Dwayne. Uh, you cannot run Dwayne with Swift Shadow. Uh, this is. Uh, I normally run Dwayne with Knighthood. Uh, Knighthood in Viking lore. Um, you cannot run Dwayne with Knight Shadow uh, with Swift Shadow. Uh, this Dwayne is basically uh, what I run for. Um, well, I run for the uh, uh, the raid. Uh, so Dwayne normally I would use Dragoon plus Knight uh, Knighthood. Um, there is a that this one hundred percent defense mod build. You can kind of run a pseudo version of that on Dwayne. You can have him be at like ninety five defense. But anyways, nothing special about the Dwayne. It's just that the speed is uh, Dwayne's speed here has to be the highest out of the three. Um, Keep on Atonement, uh, Dark Mantle, you probably want to keep on. I have all these turned off because of the raid. But you want to have Atonement and you want to have Dark Mantle. Uh, Rising Dark, Rising Twilight, you want to turn off. <clears throat> because Rising Twilight does more damage than uh, Magic Infusion. So if you have Rising Twilight on, he'll run closer to the opponent, which you don't want. And then he'll use Rising Twilight over Magic Infuse, which you also don't want. So you just want to have Magic Infuse uh, and Darkness turned on. So basically turn off everything here except for Rising Twilight. Uh, I run Dragoon because um, uh, Whisper is a thing. You're, you, there are people that run Whisper. Uh, but of course you can just not pick your, you can just not pick the Whispers. There is, however, um, uh, a lot of Slash resist going on. So if you want to use Dragoon, that's kind of as like a type coverage because everybody else is slash in the team. You don't, you're lacking the coverage. So that's why I recommend Dragoon. Uh, also for Viking, you can't really use too many of the Viking skills. Really only rebellious spirit because the rest of the right, the rest of the Viking skills might trump the, uh, uh, might have priority over your dark knight skills. Uh, okay. That's the, that's this build. Um, Espers, I, <laughs> is just standard golem. Uh, Odin, and then here are Fenrir, because he's weak to magic. They're all weak to magic, to be honest. But there's kind of an anti-magic map right now, so we're okay. Uh, this is a 100 plus, this is a, uh, heavy missile resist banquet. I run this for, uh, when I want to fight gunner teams. Um, this is a 90 defense banquet. Um, Mont with this card, he'll have threat a little bit. Uh, but he won't have the 100 defense. Um, hmm. uh, I can make a second platinum robe and then give it to him, and then he'll have uh, he'll have 70 defense. I might be able to get him to like 95 defense. 
Yeah, I might be able to get him to like 80 something defense and that'll be good. Uh, I just got the Void Crystals for a second plat robe. So I would run it like this. Yeah, he'll, he'll get 90 defense after the buff. Um, here, uh, because I'm not running Chuckable, uh, Mont absolutely has, has to have Hermes sandals here. Otherwise, he won't be able to keep up at all. Uh, this build I use very rarely, um, but this is a basically pure anti-missile build. Uh, Kane here should be running uh, anti-missile as well. So, 56 missile. If I were to hunt, uh, if I were to hunt missile teams, I would run this team because uh, most of them now are running Federica by Federica and Nivlu. Uh Occasionally, you'll see Luarta. Uh, you're not seeing Lucia as much, but basically this team will counter those uh, Federica and Evelu teams because this card gives Mont hate up front and Mont will run up first turn. Unfortunately with this build is I don't have Fleeting Blossom, so Mont will not be able to use uh, Taunting Blade uh, on the second turn. But hope these guys these guys can all take a hit because they all have a ton of missile resist. Uh this build I kind of just threw on ad hoc. There isn't anything uh, special here other than keep Mon in the front so Dan Quick can buff him. And that he can run right out. Uh, other than that, there's nothing special going on there. Um, this is the tank Dan Quick build. Uh, there's two variations of that build. This is the first variation. This is the slash resist variation. So I run Thanquit with 28 armor uh, plus the 25 armor. He'll have he'll have something like he'll have 53 armor and then 45 slash resist. He'll he'll survive. Uh, basically, this build I have uh, Thanquit intercept my opponents. Um, so I keep him first on this slot and then I keep Federica here in the last slot because Federica can only go on one of two slots. Right? She can only go in the front or she can go in the back because she's always the fastest. And she will run up and buff the two of them with aim fire. So Federica has to be either in the back or in the front. If Federica is in the front, she'll run up and use aim fire. But then I might need Dankrit to have jump and run up, uh, run straight. Because I can't have Dankrit run through that little gap. And that defeats the purpose. Because the whole point of this team is uh, I pick guys that don't have jump. And then I exploit the little choke point and have Dankrit run in there with with uh run in their second turn with a uh, rough divide, get them stuck right there, and then the gunners kill them from range. So I can't have Federica in the first slot. Also, I have Danker in the first slot. That way, he'll buff himself with uh the heart of stone. Uh, Luarta is here so that she can line up a uh because she's faster than Danker. She can line up a uh I believe she is. Yeah, she's faster than Dankwit, so she can line up a Sidewinder first, and then Dankwit will move her move on his second turn. Uh, here, Federica is not going to use Bells, so uh, that is a crucial thing to keep in mind. Um, but basically, with Dankwit clogging up the choke, I don't need Federica to have uh, to use Bells. Occasionally, she will still use Bells uh, if. That if the opponents uh, are running any kind of like pure buffing team where they'll buff themselves for two turns, then Federica will use Bells, and that will be a good time for everybody. Uh, this is Arena. Okay, so this is my uh, this is a gimmicky build. This is double quicken Federica. Uh, same thing. Um, Federica fastest has to go in there and use uh, 97 speed. Wow, runs right in, use aim fire, and then next is Nivlu. Uh, Nivlu, I have Quicken turned off. I have, I only have Quicken turned on. And normally I would probably not run Concentrate. I might only run Long Range. Uh, cause Nivlu will, uh, jump up and sometimes with her attack AI, she will hit the opponent first. So you don't want Nivlu to have got to your range in, um, at that max plus three range if you're gonna run a Quicken Federica team. So Nivlu will jump up, but she will Quicken Federica. And then uh, Skull will haste Federica. So first turn will look like this. Uh, Federica runs in, aim fire, both of them. Uh, Nivlu quickens Federica. Uh, Skull hastes Federica. And then now, now Federica's got Bells, haste, aim fire, and quicken. Uh, 
So, uh, and then she's going to run over to the left and she's good to go. Uh, this build is only good against uh, those Dwayne King builds where uh, they got to run through the choke. Uh, if they're not running through the choke, they, they're not really gathered up and they won't die to barrage. Um, cheese build don't uh, not that strong in arena. I don't I don't even know how I won ten arenas with this, but basically, um, sometimes what will happen is uh, Fabrica will just spam barrage on one guy and it's really dumb. Uh, so any kind of hate build will counter this. So when picking opponents, you gotta not pick hate builds. Maybe go for some kind of triple bruiser killer. And that's about it. There's a fire and water team that I ran during um, Christmas Mar Ramada and Christmas Mashiri, but yeah, no one runs that right now, and that's not really that's not really gonna do anything in the meta, so I'm not gonna talk about that. Uh, yeah, uh, that's the end of the vi uh, that's the end of the video. Mostly, all you have to do is know that uh, there's a speed manipulation in there. Um, a lot of these, like Hermes sandals, these TMRs that give agility is really big. Uh, ironically, uh, golden armor is very big as well because the, the minus three armor can actually come in handy in terms of speed manipulation. Uh, so to the same extent, Bale Helm will also be helpful because Bale Helm has minus three agility. Uh, but basically, your fastest guy is either going to be in the first slot or the last slot. Uh, cause we need him, uh, we need him to AOE buff everybody. And then the person that you want to get buffs cast on has to be in the first slot. So if you happen to run in, run one of those teams that have both, uh, both a guy you need to cast a buff on and a guy that has AOE buffs, you have to line this guy here and that guy, uh, the guy that receives the buffs first. So the other guy has to be in third. And then the guy in the middle has to be faster than the guy on the left or has to be faster than the first guy. Uh, so that's about it. Uh, oh wait, uh, there is, uh, that missile. Uh, so for missile resist Dankrit, um, you just switch this card for the, uh, Massive Deceit card, and then you switch the Esper from Demon Wall to Efrit, and then you'll have a full missile resist comp. Uh, that will fight any other kind of tank plus double missile build. Alright, thank you guys all for watching. Have a great day.